the religion of Jainism, traditionally called Jain Dharma, originated in ancient India. Jain Dharma emphasizes the value of right perception, right knowledge, and right conduct. Through inner reflection and sincere practice of these principles, one can attain moksha, or realization of the soul's true nature. The concept of ahimsa, or non-violence, is also central to Jainism. Thus, with respect for all life, Jain practitioners follow a pure vegan or plant-based diet. The Jain lineage includes 24 Trithankaras or beings who share their enlightenment with others. The Trithankaras teachings comprise the Agam Sutras which are the holy scriptures of Jainism. The 24th and last Trithankara was Lord Mahavira whose name means Great Hero. Born into a royal family in 599 BC, Prince Mahavira decided as a young man to pursue a solitary spiritual life. After 12 years of intensive meditation, he attained Kevalagyana or the highest wisdom. Lord Mahavira was known to face all obstacles with acceptance and forgiveness. He also shared discourses on spiritual truths which formed the basis of present-day Jainism. Supreme Master Ching Hai has offered tribute to the spiritual greatness of Lord Mahavira as during lectures given in Taiwan, also known as Formosa on various occasions. I don't know if anyone in the history of mankind could have done or could be doing or will be doing such an ascetism, such a sacrifice like the Lord Mahavira. We really salute him and are grateful <laughs> to all that he has to endure. For enlightenment, for the sake of others, yes. All these sufferings are not for naught. They would benefit the world in some way or another even without the Lord Mahavira knowing, or even without the world people knowing or being grateful for. We now invite you to continue listening to excerpts from the 12th lecture of Uttaradhyana, one of the most important scriptures in Jainism. The story continued is Harikesa Bala, a great Rishi, was badly treated by priests. 12th lecture, Harikesa. At this turn, the Yaksha, who lived in the Tinduka tree, had compassion on the great sage and making his own body invisible, spoke the following words. I am a chaste Shramana, controlling myself, I have no property, nothing belonging to me, and do not cook my food. I have come for food which is dressed for somebody else at the time when I call. You give away, eat and consume plenty of food. Know that I subsist by begging. Let the mendicant get what is left of the rest. The dinner has been prepared for Brahmanas. It has been got ready specially for ourselves and for us exclusively. We shall not give you such food and drink. Why stand you there? The husbandmen throw the corn on high ground and on low ground, hoping for a return. For the like, Motive give unto me, I may be the field which may produce merit, as the return for your benevolence. All the world knows that we are, as it were, the field on which gifts sown grow up as merit, Brahmanas of pure birth and knowledge are the blessed fields. Those who are full of anger and pride, who kill, lie, steal, and own property, are Brahmanas without pure birth and knowledge. They are very bad fields. You are only the bearer of words, as it were. You do not understand their meaning, though you have learned the Vedas. The saints call it high and lowly houses, they are the blessed fields. Detractor of the learned doctors, how dare you speak thus in our presence? This food and drink should rather rot, than we should give it to you, Nirgrantha, one without any bonds. If you do not give me what I ask for, 
I who observe the Samitis, who am protected by the Guptis, who subdue my senses, what benefit then will you gain by your sacrifices? Are here no Chhetriyas, no priests who tend the fire, no teachers with their disciples who will beat him with a stick or pelt him with a nut, take him by the neck and drive him off. On these words of the teachers, many young fellows rushed forward and they all beat the sage with sticks, canes and whips. At that turn, King Kosalika's daughter, Vadra, of faultless body, saw that the monk was beaten and appeased the angry youngsters. He is the very man to whom the king, impelled by the devil who possessed me, had given me but who would not think of me. He is the sage whom princes and gods adore, who has refused me. He is that austere ascetic of noble nature who subdues his senses and controls himself, the chaste man who would not accept me when my own father, King Kausalika, gave me to him. He is the man of great fame and might, of awful piety and power. Do not injure him who cannot be injured, lest he consume you all by the fire of his virtue. When the Yakshas heard these well-spoken words of the Purohit's wife Vadra, they came to the assistance of the sage and kept the young man off. Appearing in the air with hideous shapes, the Asuras beat the people. Vadra spoke again thus, You may as well dig rocks with your nails, or eat iron with your teeth, or kick fire with your feet, as treat contemptuously a monk. Like a poisonous snake is a great sage of severe austerities, of tremendous piety and power, like a swarm of moths, you will rust into a fire if you beat a monk on his begging tour. Prostrate yourself before him for protection, you together with all of them, if you want to save your life and your property, for in his wrath he might reduce the world to ashes. When the Brahmana saw the disciples, he became heartbroken and dejected, and together with his wife he appeased the sage, Forgive us for our injury and abuse, sir. Forgive, sir, these ignorant, stupid boys, that they injured you. Sages are exceedingly gracious, nor are the saints inclined to wrath. There is not the least hatred in me, neither now, nor before, nor in future. The Yaksas attend upon me, therefore they have beaten the boys. You know the truth and the law, spiritual precepts. You are not angry, compassionate sage. We take refuge at your feet. We together with all of them. We worship you, mighty sir. There is nothing in you that we do not worship. Eat this dish of boiled rice seasoned with many condiments. I have got plenty of food. Eat it to do us a favor. The noble monk said yes and took food and drink after having fasted a whole month. At that moment, the gods caused a rain of perfumed water and flowers and showered down heavenly treasures. They struck the drums and in the air they praised the gift. The value of penance has become visible. Birth appears of no value. Look at the holy Harikesa, the son of a Swapaka, whose power is so great. O Brahmanas, why do you taint the fire and seek external purity by water? The clever ones say that external purity which you seek for is not the right thing. You use kusa grass, sacrificial poles, straw and wood, you touch water in the evening and in the morning, thereby you injure living beings and in your ignorance you commit sins again and again. How should we sacrifice, O monk, and how to avoid sinful actions? Tell us, ascetic whom the Yakshas hold in honor, what do the clever ones declare to be the right method of sacrificing? Doing no injury to living beings of the six orders, abstaining from lying and from taking what is not freely given, renouncing property, women, pride and deceit, men should live under self-restraint. He who is well protected by the five Samwaras and is not attached to this life, who abandons his body, who is pure and does not care for his body, wins the great victory. 
a best of offerings. Where is your fire, your fireplace, your sacrificial ladle, where the dried cow dung used as fuel? Without these things, what kind of priests can the monks be? What oblations do you offer to the fire? Penance is my fire, life my fireplace, right exertion is my sacrificial ladle, the body, the dried cow dung, karma is my fuel, self-control, right exertion and tranquility are the oblations praised by the sages which I offer. Where is your pond and where the holy bathing place? How do you make your ablutions or get rid of impurity? Tell us, O restrained monk, whom the yakshas hold in honor. We desire to learn it from you. The law, spiritual precepts, is my pond, celibacy my holy bathing place, which is not turbid and throughout clear for the soul. There I make ablutions pure, clean and thoroughly cooled. I get rid of hatred or impurity. The clever ones have discovered such bathing. It is the great bath praised by the seers, in which the great seers bathe, and pure and clean they obtain the highest place. Thus I say. Vegan, the entire creation kowtows to you. Warm-hearted viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company on today's Words of Wisdom. 